Hi guys, it is a gorgeous Saturday morning here in the end times of South Austin, Texas. We have made it somehow as a planet to Saturday, February 22nd, 2014. And this is a picture. Uh, we always start out with my photo of the day. This is from North Korea, and, and if I'm looking at this correctly, this seems to be a pile of cow shit that this old woman is digging through under the headline, North Korea rejects UN rights report as fabrication. As, uh, there you go. If anyone wants to see a picture of your retirement plan... I would say a couple of plastic buckets and some little uh, metal tool to uh, dig through the cow shit. But anyway, uh, before I head out into this beautiful day, I just want to uh, do as I usually do. Pour my cup of coffee and dive into the headlines to see how this planet from North Korea to South Sudan is uh, slogging into the end times. And as I always do, we're starting over here on the left side of the dial at alternet.org. Their top headline, eight products you should think twice about before buying new eight products. The, the only products I buy new are products I stick in my mouth. There, there is virtually no product that you should buy new. All right, here is children murdered, homes foreclosed, how the government makes mistakes with impunity. There you go. From there, for anybody who does not understand the links between the global corporatocracy and every government on this planet, let Alternet.org spell this out for you. DC Insider, there is a shadow government running this country, and it is not up for re-election Power centers in D.C. and the corporate corridors of Manhattan and Silicon Valley are calling the shots. Gee, you think so? All right, uh, that one pretty much sums it up, the dot connecting for anyone who does not understand this. Here is the headline pathetic how the U.S. Department of Agriculture cowers to the poultry industry for just one small example of how the global corp how every government agency on the planet cowers to the global corporatocracy. This is one little microscopic look. How the USDA cowers to the poultry industry. You could go on with this uh, all day long. Here is, there's really bad stuff buried in those terms and conditions you are expected not to read and just click yes on. And guess who the worst offenders of all are? They would be the banksters. And finally, how a Yemeni wedding became a funeral. The harrowing details of a U.S. drone attack. Investigation reveals that 12 civilians were killed when a U.S. drone targeted a wedding procession in Yemen. 
there you go and that's what's going on on the left side of the dial oops I'm back in North Korea this is from the mainstream media about uh, how the UN is trying to get these uh, bastards from North Korea to show up at the International War Crimes uh, Court for Human Rights Abuses and whoever that little guy over there, that little pipsqueak dictator, dictator that we need to blow off the face of this planet uh, calling charges against him complete fabrication. Alright, am I fine? Okay, finally. Now I have found the headlines. Alright. Ukraine protesters take Kiev. Okay, the protesters have won. Meaning, now I don't know. Uh, guys, I admit I have no dog in this fight. I do think Gerald Salente is probably correct that the U.S. government is somewhere behind these, quote, protesters on some level. Let's see, then we have, again, right next to that story, at these protests ramping up down there in Venezuela. All right. Coal ash dumps threaten community. Do you think so? This is Wilmington, North Carolina. That's where this is coming from. I don't know if, they, if that's the community they're talking about. I love this. The Cape Fear River. The tall stacks of the Duke Energy's steam electric plant on the Cape Fear River. There you go. All right. The G20 uh, urges central banks to avoid surprises. There you go. Uh, avoid surprises. Like, like anybody is going to be surprised when the central banks of this planet collapse. I'm surprised every day that they don't. Okay, what's going on over there in big gas? Natural gas prices up 18%. 18% in one week. Okay, from there, just how bad is California's epic drought? I'm not sure this is an op-ed. I'm not sure by who. All right. Four years ago, during an interview for the World Water Crisis documentary, Last Call at the Oasis, I've been uh, meaning to watch this documentary, Last Call at the Oasis, I was blunt in my analysis of California's water future. Where was I? California faces a water crisis of potentially epic proportions. And we are seeing that playing out. That was whoever this guy is. Four years ago, looking into his crystal ball. Let's see. Here's another story that I don't really understand about this... Uh, this bankster over there in Nigeria, Lamido Sanusi, uh, he got kicked out of the central bank and, and they're closing in on him. He was whistleblowing about how these corrupt politicians were making all of this oil money seem to be disappearing millions and millions of dollars of oil money flowing into Nigeria and just flowing into a black hole, which would be the president. Good luck, Jonathan's family is where it's going. And he will probably be the next bankster to get killed. But I don't understand, why are they having all these 
articles in the mainstream media about this one bankster when there's anywhere from 7 to 20 other banksters uh, dying of suspicious circumstances. Anywho, no mention of that anywhere on the mainstream media. It's all over the alternative media. Nowhere mentioned in the mainstream media. Okay, from Nigeria to West Virginia. Oh, too bad. West Virginia chemical spill firm winding down operations. The company at the center of West Virginia's chemical spill that contaminated drinking water for 300,000 people is selling the rest of its chemicals and helping its 51 employees find new jobs, probably at the next chemical firm next door to the one that got caught with its pants down. There you go. And another story on this one. Uh, <laughs> after West Virginia chemical spill comes water tasting contest. <clears throat> Just hours away from a West Virginia city plagued for weeks by chemical-tainted, undrinkable tap water, H2O enthusiasts will sip municipal waters like fine wine in search of the world's best. Okay, uh, there you go. Now, now this one, guys, uh, looking at omens for the end times. I, I just love this one. Uh, Uh-oh. Giant squid sightings considered an omen by Japanese fishermen. <clears throat> Giant squid were once the stuff of sea monster legend. Now, giant squid are turning up with regularity off the Japanese coast. <clears throat> Now, I, I don't know, I, I haven't gone on this uh, article about this omen of the end times and looking at the tie-in to, uh, to Fukushima, but obviously I wonder how many of these giant squid were just regular size squid uh, four years ago, and it, it makes me think of these, you know, these B-grade science fiction horror movies from the 1950s as the Fukushima giant squids uh, start crawling out of the ocean in the omen of the end times. Anyway, from the giant squid in Japan to the more dangerous giant squid in Central Africa, where we see President Samba Panza urges France not to abandon Central Africa. Central African Republic and President Samba Panza urged France on Friday not to abandon her country. Well, I think you know my... Opinion on that, uh, France and every other country on this planet outside of Africa, namely China, need to abandon Africa. We need to get out of Africa. All right, here we go. LifeScience.com. Neighbors turn to cannibalism when desperate. Though seemingly docile creatures, neighbors can get snippy when hungry and sometimes end up eating each other when the stakes are high. Many species of neighbors demonstrate some degree of cannibalism when resources are scarce. 
Guys, obviously that was somewhat of a joke. Instead of that was really an article about tadpoles turn to cannibalism when desperate. That uh, when resources get scarce in the uh, in the in the tadpole pool, and they've eaten all the algae, and uh, there's nothing left to eat in their in their shelves of algae, they turn to eating each other. And uh, we should take a lesson from the tadpoles. Anyway, uh, from cannibalistic neighborly tadpoles, let's go over there and back to South Sudan in Africa. Gee, how about this? No shit, Sherlock. Headline, UN cites evidence of rebel abuses in South Sudan. Okay, the UN has evidence that rebel forces have murdered civilians, including children, in the key oil hub of Malakal. Yep, yep, yep. As the oil wars ramp up in South Sudan and elsewhere, in Venezuela, where well, how many oil wars do we have going on on this planet from South Sudan to... Venezuela. All right. Pentagon moving ahead with new vertical lift aircraft. I thought those are called helicopters. Vertical lift aircraft. Anyway, from the Pentagon back to the UN. Here we go. UN chief counting on Bloomberg's help on climate. Okay. Uh, the UN is counting on Michael Bloomberg, counting on the billionaire philanthropist to work for humanity. There you go. Those billionaire philanthropists working for humanity. Good for the billionaire Philanthropist. Okay. Here we go. I just had a, a rant about garbage trucks a couple of days ago, and here we go. Uh, sinkhole swallows garbage truck. A sinkhole swallowed a garbage truck in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Good Lord, uh, there is nowhere safe. Uh, I thought these sinkholes, I didn't have any idea. I guess they're showing up in Philadelphia and swallowing garbage trucks. Here is yet another, uh, yet another story on this Nigerian bankster. There's something up with this, guys. If, uh, if the mainstream media is so concerned uh, about this story, I guess I should be more, I should be deeper into this. Nigerian security agents have seized the passport and are plotting to arrest the internationally respected banker who is ousted as central bank governor after he revealed that billions of dollars from, uh, from oil money had uh, just disappeared. That is a good way to get your ass arrested. I would not want to trade places with that man. Jesus. Okay. Then we got to get through all the Olympic stories. Jesus. Uh, let's see. The newest California shootings. I can't believe it. They're still talking about Nancy Kerrigan uh, 20 years later. All right. Here we go. 17 bodies dumped 
in Mexican Mass Grave. All right. Uh, why sit-ups won't get you a flat stomach. No, sit-ups will not get you a flat stomach. But I bet, uh, I bet the problems of love handles... That problem is getting ready to be cured on, on this planet. Uh, if you want to see flat stomach stomachs, my guess is you go over there to South Sudan and the Central African Republic, and you will probably see some flat stomachs. Well, not all of them, except for the little children, those, you know, when they have those distended stomachs. Anyway, moving along. Uh, here is Kill Monsters with hundreds of other players. There you go. You can kill some monsters with hundreds of other players. <coughs> Here we go. Here's an important one. Why Ukraine's former prime minister and her hair are so important. There you go. Let's see. All right. We can see that Duke Energy stepping up to the plate. Duke Energy plugs. Plugs second leaking pipe at North Carolina coal ash dump. There you go. You go, Duke Energy. You go plug in your leaky pipes. Yep, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, now this one, you can expect to see this headline uh, repeating itself. Oregon teens planned out swastika attack. All right, there you go. Uh, now, here's an important story from ABC News. Megan Fox and Brian Austin Green choose unique name for their new baby. There you go. I have zero clue, never heard the name Megan Fox or Brian Austin Green in my life. I have zero clue who they are, but I'm so glad they have a new little bundle of joy with a weird name. All right. Here's another uh, story that you can expect to see repeated. Let's see. Woman suing claims she was injured by police officer who arrested her and put her in jail for recording a traffic stop. A traffic stop took a turn for the worse when a police officer learned he was being recorded. That is a good way to get your ass thrown in jail. Okay. Uh, let's go over there to Zimbabwe. Uh, when we look at Mugabe, Zimbabwe's President Mugabe turns 90 years old. All right. In power since 1980, critics say Mugabe has turned one of Africa's most promising economies into a basket case. And right under that, we have the third, or is it the fourth story? This is Reuters News weighing in on this Nigerian bankster. This uh, is one of the biggest stories on the mainstream media today. The, there is something afoot. This guy has some information about big oil in sub-Saharan Africa that you believe, that you better believe that these, uh, that big oil and these governments in their pocket do not want 
getting out. Okay. Let's see. Moving along. What have I got? Five more minutes. Oh, here's a uh, here, here's an easy question. I love it when headlines ask questions. <clears throat> Ecuador's development dilemma. Will oil win out? Uh, will oil win out in the development of Ecuador? Well, I think Presidente Rafael Correa has answered that question. Yes, big oil will win out in the development of Ecuador, and after they have completely destroyed that country, and the on they're done with the oil, they will just leave Ecuador to clean up the mess. We've already seen that with Chevron, and we will soon see it with the Chinese oil companies down there now. The U.S. has done their damage, and now the Chinese can pick up where we left off to finish the job. Anyway, from the destroyed Ecuador, let's go to Home Depot, where we find a man in Home Depot fraud gets two and a half years in prison. A Michigan man who switched price stickers on Home Depot products and then returned the items for refunds was sentenced Thursday to two and a half years in prison. There you go. The Home Depot will not tolerate that shit. Let's see. Back to the and the next article on the California drought. I guess it's official now. Uh, it was a rumor. It's now official in the Associated Press. California farmers won't get federal water. Without a lot more rain and snow, many California farmers caught in the state's drought can expect to receive no irrigation water this year from a vast system of rivers, canals, and reservoirs. There you go. It's official. Zero uh, irrigation water will be coming to you, buddy. All right. Uh, what do I got? Three more minutes. I'm almost at the bottom here. Uh, let's see, there's a good picture of, from Egypt, let's see, uh, let's go, let's click on this picture of, uh, now here's one more, did, what happened to my cursor, did Nazis study insects? for use in biological warfare. There you go. Uh, and now I was... Oh, well. We'll just wrap it up there because I lost my picture of Egypt that I wanted to uh, take a look at. Seems to have... Oh, here we go. Let's close with a photo of what Egypt looks like today. We're going to view this photo of... There's Egypt. We started off in North Korea, and there is a picture of Egypt uh, on February 22nd, 2014. And I need to head out into this beautiful day. Probably no rants from the rock, because I got to go help someone put up some sort of tent. All right. So I'm going to wrap this one up and say for my February 22nd, 2014 edition of our Peek into the End Times, let's say goodbye to this gas-sucking car in Egypt. Uh, there you go. May every gas-sucking car on this planet follow suit. Bye, guys.